Hello and good morning. This video tutorial is going to be on route summarization and specifically uh, route summarization for IPv4 and IPv6. I had a number of students uh, request some additional information uh, regarding summarization. They wanted to see some additional examples uh, with respect to IPv4 and IPv6. So we've got a lab topology over here and obviously this is well outside the scope of uh, the CCNA however uh, this lab topology will serve well in order for us to have a discussion about route summarization so let's go ahead and jump right in so route summarization is when you want to represent a series of routes with a single routing entry and so for example on R8 here if we had multiple networks that we're hanging off of R8, we're behind R8, and we wanted to create a summary route, and let's say we're gonna do our summary right here on router three. So if these networks were 10, 0, 0, 0, and let's say 10.0.1.0, we'll do all slash 24s, and then dot two, dot zero and dot three dot zero. Summarization allows us to take a look at these four routes and try to determine do we have a way to represent all four of these routes with a single statement. And now that brings us over to how do we summarize. So if you remember, very similar to subnetting, when you have a series of addresses, dot zero, dot zero, dot, whoops, hold it down a little too long there. Let's back that up. There we go. 10.0.0.0 dot zero, dot zero, dot zero slash 24, and then 10.0. Dot zero, dot, whoops, actually back that up. And 10.0.0.1 dot zero, dot zero, dot slash 24, and then 10.0.2. Dot zero slash 24 and finally 10.0.3.0 slash 24. So the question comes how can I represent all of these with a single statement? And so we take a look at the octets for IPv4 and you can see that the first octet is the same for all of the addresses. So given that the first octet is the same we move to the second octet and you can see here that again it's zero for all of them, so it's the same. However, when we reach the third octet, you can see it's zero, one, two, and three. And so this becomes the interesting octet for us from a route summarization perspective. And so now what we want to do is we want to find out where do the bits in this octet where do they match up and then where is the first location that they do not match up so remember this octet and this octet all of the bits match for all the IP addresses so we've got eight bits here plus the eight bits that match here now we need to figure out how many bits are going to match in that third octet so we're gonna do our conversion from decimal and we're gonna take this and we're gonna go to binary because again we're interested in the bits. How many bits match? So for zero, it's very simple. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And for one, again, very simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then for two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oops. Back that up. And then for three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so when we take a look at this, we can see that right up here, the bits in the seventh and eighth position, right, these bits no longer match, right, in this, in this column right here. We have zero, zero, and then one, one. So what you do is you just kind of draw a line, and then you count the bits that did match. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have an additional six bits that match. So we had eight bits in the first octet, eight bits in the second octet, 
and then six bits in the third octet. So eight and eight is 16, and six is 22. So now we know our subnet mask. So our subnet mask is a slash 22, or in dotted decimal format, 255.255. Dot, and if you didn't want to back yourself into this, you know, starting from 255 and then saying, you know, take two bits off, 254, 252. Dot zero. The way that you can do this sort of what I refer to as longhand is to say 128 plus 92, or I'm sorry, plus 64 is 192, plus 32 is 224, 240, 248, and then 252, right? Keeping in mind that these the value positions here in these octets, it's very similar to when we're doing subnetting, right? And so that would be our dotted decimal format. So now the question becomes, okay, I've got the subnet mask, I know the dotted decimal notation, but what exactly would the IP, what would the network look like? And so that would be 10 dot zero dot, and I'll do another example here in a second, but when we take a look at all of these bit positions where there were matches, none of the values for these positions are on. In other words, there's no one in any of these positions making them relevant. So in other words, this is just zero. So 10.0.0.0.0 slash 22. So this would be a summarization of these four networks. Now, we also know from looking at the last two bits that don't match. And so let's take a quick peek at these. And this is always interesting, and this will help you as well when you get ready to transition to ACLs or access control lists. So you can see here I've got the, the 00, the 01, the 10, and the 11. So there are two bits that don't match. So if I take those two bits and I go two to the number of bits that don't match, what we end up with is four. And so what this tells us, these last two bits that don't match, even though we've thrown them away and they really aren't using our calculation to arrive or derive the summary, what we can uh, gather from these two bits here that don't match is that there will be, and I apologize, this little button on my, on the pencil, there's what these two bits here are actually telling us, and those two bits are reflected right there, is that there will be four networks, or there could be four networks, that are going to be represented by this summary. And so we need to make sure we have every combination here. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And the bits that don't match, that's every combination. So we, with these four networks, we have represented all four networks and only these four networks. And so we're going to take a look here at another example where this is not the case as well as what happens when a bit value out here is on. All right, so again, this is our summary address and if we were putting this on router 3 we could use the statement, and let me flip the page here. We could use the statement IP route, and I would say 10.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0 255.255.255. 255 .255 and then we get to the last bit of information that we need. And that is a terrible arrow. We get to the last bit of information that we need. We could have the exit interface, the local interface on the router, which we want the traffic to transit, so we could have the interface. We could have the next hop IP, so I could provide the next hop IP address of where I want the traffic to go, or I could do fully specified, right? So let me put this over here, so, and this becomes very important with respect to how you do your static routes. And we'll talk a little bit about Ceph, Cisco Express forwarding here as well. 
So the first one is the exit interface, right? So if we're taking a look at router 3, I can pick, I can say, I can send it out Ethernet 01, or I could send it out Serial 10. So this is also going to start a conversation as to when would you choose the next top IP and when would you choose the interface? So the interface should be chosen if it's point to point, meaning it's not multi-access. So in this diagram here, there's no switch. And so even though Ethernet is a broadcast medium, this is a point to point connection and so is the serial connection. So the rule of thumb is usually in point to point connections, you always specify the exit interface. So if we wanted to go ahead and say serial, whoops, serial one zero, that would be using the exit interface. We could also say ETH zero zero, and that would be using the exit interface. And so again, best practices and per the Cisco documentation and coursework, we use the interface in a static route when we're trying when we're using a point to point link. All right, so then we have next top IP. So if you take a look at the next top IP, right, we could certainly put in there the next top IP of the serial interface 10.53.53. .53 and in this case it would be 5 and remember this is the the IP address of the next hop not our local IP so with the interface right this is local to the router on which we're making the star or which we're applying that static route statement so however this is the next hop so this is remote so this is going to be on the router that we want to send this traffic to if I wanted to send it over to router 2, it would just simply be 10.32.32.2, right? And this would be the next hop IP. Now, remember we said in a point-to-point -point interface uh, scenario, there's really no other place for the traffic to go. We know that if the traffic exits out this interface, that it's going to come this direction, right? Because it's the only way the traffic can travel. However, when you get into a multi-access scenario, and so let's go ahead and say if I had a router here, let's say this is R1, and he connects into a switch, and I've got R2 and R3, and let's say R4 even, right? And router four. And then these guys all go off, and maybe they all connect into one router behind them, right? Or possibly, who knows, maybe there's another router in here, R5, R6. Okay. But the key is we have a multi access setup here where if 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4, if this guy is dot 3 and he's dot 2 and they're all on the same subnet, dot 4 and dot 1, if I use the exit interface, for example, let's say that that's gig 00. zero if I do my static route and I simply throw it out the gig 00 interface, I have no real way of knowing for certain, with any certainty, that when that traffic goes out, it's actually going to go out and go to the next hop router that I want it to go to. Because I'm throwing it out to a multi-access environment. And so this is where you would want to use the next hop IP is when there could be more than one decision that would need to be made in terms of what router am I going to go to. So if router one just throws it out gig zero zero, we could be looking at a scenario where it could go to router two, it could go to router three, or it could come to router four. And so which router do we want it to come to? Because again, we're saying that these guys are all in the same broadcast domain, so they're all in the same VLAN, right? And they're on the same subnet. So we need to be more specific in a multi-access configuration like this, and that's where you want to use your next hop IP. So again, you're just basically removing any uncertainty from the equation. And so the IP route statement for us, uh, let's say, for the sake of argument, let's say there was a switch here, right? 
and we wanted this static route to go from router 3 over here obviously to take the 10 meg interfaces as opposed to the the serial length the 1.544 megabit per second so on router 3 I would say IP route and it's going to be 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0, 255.255.255 .255 .255 252.0 and I would use the next hop IP here. I would say 10.32.32.2. And again, this is, I'll just put next hop IP, right? Because up here we're theoretically saying there, you know, maybe there's another router up here, router 9 and router 10. And these guys are all on the same network, the same subnet, the same VLAN we want to make sure we're very specific and we want to provide that next hop IP. Conversely, on a point-to-point -point link here, right, this serial connection that we have, we want to use the interface because if the traffic is thrown out that interface in this scenario here, he's only going to be able to come over to router 5. There is no multi-access capability within this link. And so that's where we use the interface. All right, and then finally a word on fully specified. And so fully specified, I'm going to back up a little bit here. So we'd say IP route 10.0.0, whoops, .0, 255.0, that's a colon. We don't want that. Back up one more there. So 255.255.255, oops, sorry, 252. Let me back that up there. Okay, 252.0. And if I wanted to fully specify it, I could say ETH 0 slash 0, or I'm sorry, 0 slash 1 up there, and then the next top IP. So 10.32.32.2. Now this would be fully specified. And so a quick note on this. If you're using Ceph or Cisco Express Forwarding, and, and for all newer equipment, whoops, for all newer equipment that's going to be on by default, and I'll go ahead and flip the page here. So that fully specified reference where we have the, the exit interface paired up with the next hop IP, right, you don't actually need to do this if you're running Ceph. And the reason being is that if we remember from the conversation about Cisco Express Forwarding, is Cisco Express Forwarding is actually the FIB which is your forwarding information base, which are your prefixes, network prefixes, and then you've got the adjacency table. And your adjacency table is going to be your layer three to layer two map. And what do I mean by that? So remember that on a router, when traffic comes into the router, let's say traffic is coming into the router this way, the router is gonna receive those bits, it's going to peek into that layer 2 frame and it's going to look at the source and the destination MAC address. As soon as the router, and we'll say this guy's R1, as soon as R1 looks at that destination MAC address and sees that it's his MAC address, he's going to accept that packet. You're then going to go up one layer to layer 3 and he's going to look at the source and destination IP address. So if the destination IP is a local network, then the traffic is, is quickly switched out whatever interface um, that network sits on. However, if it's going to a remote network, and just like we had our static routes here, if it's going to a remote network, and let's say it is the 10.0.0.0 slash 22, if it's going to this network, router one is gonna look in its route table right which is the rib routing information base and it's going to determine okay I have a route and it's out this gig zero zero interface so he looks at the IP and without Ceph he would have to do a recursive lookup to say alright well I know that the network is 10 zero zero slash 22 now I need to take a peek and see out which interface do I need to go to get to that network? With Ceph, 
you no longer, it's already done automagically for you because you've got a mapping of the prefixes, right? And the fib pulls its information from the rib. It looks at the networks that are there and it comes up with an adjacency table where it has mappings for things like 10.0.0.0 slash 22 and the mapping tells it you go out the gig 00 interface. So where you used to have to fully specify your static routes in order to save that recursive lookup by providing that information, today with Cisco Express forwarding, that work is already done for you. So if you provide the next hop IP address, the Ceph or the FIB and the adjacency table which make up the Ceph will do that lookup for you and it's the layer three to layer two mapping that tells it if it's going to this network, then it's gonna go out this physical interface, right? So it saves you from having to do the recursion. Okay, so that is our one example there. So let's take a look at another summarization example, one that's not so straightforward. So let's say that over here on router seven, and we'll do three networks, and this is gonna be 10. dot zero dot and we'll say 10.0 slash 24 and this is 10.0.20.0 slash 24 and 10.0.30.0 slash 24 now this is where when you go to design the network you need to make sure that you think things through so if these were my three networks and it could be more, maybe it was 10 networks where it goes up to dot 40 and then dot 50. And I see, you see this a lot where network engineers will pick blocks, they'll say dot 10, dot 20, dot 30, dot 40, dot 50. However, the challenge arises when, for example, um, let's say that I'm here on router eight and I wanna provide a summary address for those networks. So if I come over here and I say 10.0.10.0 slash 24, and then we'll say dot 20, dot 30, and we'll add dot 40, and well, actually, we'll just leave those off. So when we take a look at this, again, you can see the first eight bits here, they're all gonna match. These eight bits are gonna match. So we've got eight bits that match, and then eight more bits that match in the second octet. Now we need to figure out how many bits are gonna match here. So again, we go from decimal to binary, and we're gonna say 10 is one, two, three, four, and then eight, uh, zero, one, zero, and that is equal to 10. So then we've got one, two, three, four, zero, one, one, and then that's equal to Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna back up. I was actually going in order as you probably would. So we're gonna do uh, 20 is going to be next. So we're actually gonna back up one more. So 16 would be on, eight is off, and then four would be on, zero, zero, and that's 20. And then 30, zero, 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 32 wouldn't be on. We've got 16, 24, 28, 29, 30, and then zero, and that's 30. So as you can see, it's gonna be a little different here, and this is gonna show you what happens when you space your networks out like this, and then you go to summarize. So right off the bat, we can see there's one, two, three bits that match. However, it stops right there, right? So we know that this is gonna be three, so eight and eight is 16, and three is 19, so our summary will be a slash 19. So what I need you to pay attention to here is in this, in this example is look at the bits that don't match though, right? So we've got one, two, three, four, five bits that don't match. And so two to the five is equal to 32. So if I were to summarize this, it would look like this, 10.0. Oops, 10.0.0. Let's go back to black there. 10.0.0.0 slash 19. Now, some network admins may think, okay, I've got this slash 19, and that's gonna summarize these three networks. 
and it certainly will. You will actually definitely get these three networks. However, there are 29 other networks that you are also representing by using this summary address. And the reason we know that is because you would have to figure out for these five bits, and obviously we don't have space here, you would have to figure out all 32 combinations of possible combinations over here of ones and zeros. So we're representing 10, 20, and 30. However, there are 29 other networks that are going to be represented. All right, so that's just to make sure that when you end up in scenarios where you've got these huge jumps between the subnets, is that summarization might become a little bit difficult and could become tricky because if I have to place that route down here, right, and I've already got these networks behind me and I'm telling router eight, go this way to get to this summary, right, these addresses down here, 10.0.1.0, that's going to fall into this range, right? So while this may look like a good idea uh, initially, it's definitely something to think about and make sure that you understand when you summarize that you're getting you might be getting more than you bargained for with respect to the number of IP addresses so let's take a look at one final um, summary example and we're gonna look at some networks off of here we'll say we've got whoops three networks over here off of R6 right so router 6 is gonna have three networks behind it and we're gonna say that it's gonna be 10.10 .10 16.0 slash 24, dot 17.0 slash 24, and dot 18.0 slash 24. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to size up this octet and this octet are the same, and here is the interesting octet. So we've got eight bits that match and another eight bits that match, and now we need to figure out how many bits are going to match in that third octet. So we again go from decimal to binary. And I'm going to say 16 is 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 17 is easy to figure out once you've got 16 done. And then 18 the same way, 16, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now the reason I like this example is this shows us what happens when you have a bit position where the value is on. So where do these guys no longer match up? They no longer match up right here after six bits. They no longer match up. So we know that we're going to add six in here, and 16 plus six is slash 22. So again, we're at a dot 252.0, 255.255. For our dotted decimal subnet mask, and there's our CIDR notation. However, now we're, we're left with a couple things we need to answer. So would it be 10.10.0.0 slash 22? It would not, right? Because we need to account for this bit position that is on. And that value in that bit, that bit position is 16. So that is not going to be your summary address. Your summary address will be 10.10.16. .10 and then everything after the bits match, right? Everything after that, these values are irrelevant with respect to our summary address calculation. So this is 16, that is a terrible six, dot zero slash 22. So that is the summary address, right? However, remember a second ago, I said these bits are irrelevant in the calculation of the summary address. And that's a true statement because once we figured out where the bits no longer match, everything after that, so everything this way, becomes zero in the summary address. However, these bits do provide us with some information. Remember we said before, if you take two to the number of remaining bits that are left, and in our case it's two to the two, which is four, you then know that this summary actually represents four networks. However, we're only showing three here. So while 
you might think at first glance that the 10.10.16.0 slash 22 represents these three networks and only those three networks. There's a fourth network that it's representing. And so to figure it out, very simple, we make sure we have every single combination possible of these last two bits. So we have 00, zero we have zero, 01, and we have 10. And so what's the one that we're missing? We're simply missing 1, 1. Now, how do I figure out what this last network is? And it's very simple. If I were to write this same binary string out, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oops, let me go back one there. I'm going to get that 16 in there. And let's back up one more. So 1, 2, 3, whoops, all kinds of pen issues. Let's back that out. All right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7 and 8. I would simply go ahead and do the calculation here and go from binary to decimal. So this is 16. This is 2. And that has a value of 1. So 16 plus 2 plus 1 is 19. So unbeknownst to me, if I don't understand how do I figure out which addresses are being represented by that summary, I'm actually also representing 10.10.19.0 slash 24, right? So that network is also being represented even though it's not here. This summary will pick that up. And when you go to do ACLs, remember this because with ACLs it's very similar where the ACL that you're creating, you may be denying access, uh, you know, traffic coming from a specific network. You need to be very careful because you may actually be saying deny traffic from, and in this last example we had, if you were doing this thinking, oh, I'm just blocking these three networks, you're actually blocking 29 additional networks in addition to these three with that statement. All right. So that's the IPv4 summary. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut it right here. And I'll get this posted up. And then I'm going to follow on with just simply a clean sheet of paper. And we're going to start up here with IPv6 summarization, which just because of the fact that it's IPv6 um, causes students more grief because we're dealing with hex. And you've got an additional step in there where you've got to make a conversion and then when you're converting back you need to make sure you watch out for the values so I'll go ahead and uh, break the video here and hopefully you'll continue on and get some more out of how to summarize IPv6 addresses